You are watching WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. All today's news with Mike Walcher, Debbie Ely, Dr. Walt Lyons has weather, Tom Hanneman has sports. And now, this is the 6 p.m. report. Good evening, everyone. It may be August, but the football season is about to begin. That's right, the preseason, anyway. The Minnesota Vikings are about an hour away from an exhibition game with the New Orleans Saints. It's a game that you'll see here on Channel 4 starting at 7 o'clock. Mark Rosen of our staff is in New Orleans, and he'll join us live with a preview a bit later in sports. The financially troubled Minnesota Strikers are fighting to stay afloat tonight. This week, the team announced that it may not be able to play next year unless it comes up with half a million dollars in financial support. Well, tonight, an effort to do just that is underway in Shakopee. Daryl Savage is there now, and he has a live report. Daryl? Mike, we're here at the Canterbury Inn in Shakopee, and it's a classic example of the fans who just won't let their team die. As you mentioned, on Wednesday, Minnesota Strikers management announced that they have to raise $500,000 by the end of the weekend. Thus, the formation by fans of the SOS, Save Our Strikers, campaign fundraiser. More than 200 people have come here to pledge donations, buy souvenirs, and have fun with the players. The biggest thing, of course, is to get closer to collecting that goal of half a million dollars. It's the most important pep rally in the three-year-old franchise's history. People here say the team means a lot. They had post-game parties, and the strikers seemed to really like their fans. They were concerned more about their fans. So the, the fans are returning their favor by trying to keep them here. They're down-to-earth individuals. They don't, they don't put their nose up to anybody. Uh, they'll talk to children. They'll talk to adults. And they, they're constantly promoting the game. And that, to me, is, is very important. They can make it, and a lot of people are behind them. Professional sports teams fold for money problems every year in this league. These supporters don't want to see that happen here. Boosters have already collected about $200,000. You can see now, going on behind us, we have an auction that's going on. Here in the end, they're auctioning off some of the souvenirs from, some, uh, from uh, the striker players, some uniforms, and right now a game ball. This afternoon, Super America pledged another $30,000 to the strikers, and they're trying to get other businesses to do the same. And now, during the era of high-salaried athletes, comes one of the most unique donations of all. Sixteen players got together, and they're going to take a pay cut of a total of $100,000 to $110,000 to help the team out. Right now, joining me is the coach of the Strikers, Alan Merrick. Alan, this is something you don't see often, this many people coming out to support a team. What is your reaction when you see this? I'm overwhelmed by it. It's, uh, it's reminiscent of the past years when I was a player with the Kicks, where there's a love affair that's been generated. Uh, the rapport between the players and the fans is sincere. Uh, their desire to keep this team in, in functioning during this next season is, is honest, and uh, the endeavors that they're making, uh, it looks as if we could succeed. There's a long way to go. But if anybody can do it, it's this crowd here and the supporters of, uh, in the Twin Cities and in the state. In many ways, it's easier for the fans to get up. What about the players and the coach? What's the morale like? Well, the morale is incredibly high, especially after today when we have a shot in the arm from a great sponsor of ours, Super America. They come forward and say they're going to take a game from us during the, the regular season, a, a midweek game. And then they put out a corporate challenge for all of the other uh, corporations in, in the state to follow suit. We have eight more midweek games, and if we can get eight corporations who take those games, uh, we can make sure that the strikers never go through anything like this in the future. This franchise will be cemented. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alan Merrick, the coach of the strikers. Uh, if you add up all those donations, you know that they're still $150,000 short of that goal of $500,000. These self-proclaimed striker likers hope that we don't get to the point where the team might have to fold. Mike. Right you are, Daryl. Thank you. I understand there was a telethon today on uh, cable WCCO2 to raise money for the strikers, and $150,000 short, perhaps they'll make it. Yeah, Thanks, it looks Darryl. like that, plus they're getting money here, too. All right, good. The Minnesota Twins will be back in action tonight, trying to widen their lead in the American League West. The Twins meet the Seattle Mariners in less than an hour, and Tony Parker has a preview live from our sports center. Tony? Okay, first of all, for those who haven't heard, things broke right for the Twins in Anaheim last night. Oakland beat the Angels 7-6 to six in 12 innings, increasing the Twins' West Division lead over second-place California to three and a half games. Oakland and California play again tonight, and Kansas City, tied with Oakland at four games back, will take on the Tigers again in Kansas City. Bert Blylevin put on another gutty performance last night. He had a problem early, loading the bases with one out in the first, 
but he humped up and got Jim Presley and Ken Phelps and strikeouts to end that threat. Bird went eight to get the win. The Twins got quite a scare here in the eighth when Kirby Puckett was hit on the hands by, on the left hand by Angels pitcher Mike Morgan. Now, Kirby said he thought at first the bone might be broken, but x-rays were negative. He stayed in the game and scored then when Gaetti hit a two-run double of Dennis Powell, who came on to relieve Morgan after Morgan's pitch hit Puck. Now, we've been on the phone with the Twins, and they've just told us that Kirby will take batting practice before they decide whether or not he'll play tonight. There's a good chance he will, and, of course, we'll have it all tonight at 10 o'clock. A lot of things going on. The Vikings, uh, the Twins, the Strikers. Hard to keep track of it all. <laughs> we will. Okay. okay. Among the items still to come tonight, a story of neighbor helping neighbor. A lot of folks got the brush as volunteers spread out to paint hundreds of homes today. We'll have that story in a moment. New Chicken Little. New Chicken Little. Love your eleven herbs and spices, and your price is so low. My darling chicken littles, I found you at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and I'll never let you go. New chicken little sandwiches, you cost just a little, but people love you a lot. Super Bowl starts here. Join Mark Rosen and the WCCO sports team live from New Orleans as the Vikings battle the Saints. NFL preseason football starts Saturday at 7 on Channel 4, your Viking station. The clock is our tyrant. This is it. You're on, ready or not. And we're energized by this. I think the fact that we never know when a trap door is going to release on our program, what someone may say, what a caller may say or how a guest may respond is one of the things that's kept us alive for 20 years. This is a very, very rare opportunity. Minneapolis police are investigating the murder of a woman who was shot several times last night outside an apartment building. Authorities say that 20-year-old Michelle Becker was killed in the parking lot at 2612 Cedar Avenue South. She was the caretaker of that building. Police say that a man shot her several times about 9 o'clock last night as she was leaving on a motorcycle. No suspects in custody. Twin Cities veterans gathered today to end a week of remembrance. Color guards, rifle squads, and a lone bugler turned out for the closing ceremonies of a replica Vietnam veterans memorial on display in South St. Paul. The half-scale wall carries the names of all of the men and women who died in the Vietnam conflict. Memorial representatives say more than 25,000 Minnesotans viewed the wall during the week-long event. And in Minneapolis, Minnesotans opposed to American military policy paddled in a Persian Gulf peace flotilla on Lake Calhoun. The protesters say President Reagan has no right to provoke a war in the Gulf without first consulting Congress and the American people. They chose the waterborne demonstration as a way to bring that message to the sun worshippers around the lake. Today, 7,000 people offered helping hands to the elderly and the disabled. It was the fourth annual Metro Paint-a-thon. It's designed to help out folks who either can't afford or simply can't paint their own homes. When it was over, 278 homes had been painted and 3,000 gallons of paint used up. Terry Sater has the story. Jim Young is painting his way into the hearts of poor elderly homeowners. This is the Eden Prairie Accountant's third year in the Paint-a-thon. You come in the morning, and it's in bad need of paint. And you leave at, you know, 2 or 3 o'clock, total transformation. And it, it's fun to see. It's fun to be a part of it. Young and a growing legion of volunteers are helping out three times as many needy homeowners than were helped during Paint-a-thon's first try in 1984. The positive strokes are felt by folks like 70-year-old Ruth Spetton. Ruth still works part-time, but didn't have the money to fix her St. Paul home's cracked and peeling paint. Well, I really appreciated this, and I was so happy when I got selected, you know, 275 homes, I think, out of both cities. 
And I was so glad because I was trying to figure out how am I going to get this painted. Ruth's home is being touched up by a team of 30 painters from the mayor's office. The volunteer cover-up would normally cost about $1,000. It may be the 80s, 90s, it doesn't matter how long we're around or how modern things get. Neighbors helping each other is what makes a community, what makes a city special. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just love every one of them. They're really, I was really appreciated this. Paintathon organizers say 98% of the volunteers come back the following year, and they're hoping even more homes can be painted next summer. Terry Sater, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. If you'd like to volunteer to paint next year or need your home painted next summer, you can call Paint-A-Thon. The number is 870-3660-870-3660. Robbinsdale residents turned out today to honor their firefighters. The annual fire prevention open house featured fire truck rides and safety demonstrations as well as all of the usual summer refreshments. The festivities will conclude this evening with a street dance in front of the Hubbard Avenue station. Robbinsdale volunteer firefighters have served their community for more than 70 years. We congratulate them. We have all of the makings for bad weather tonight. High humidity, hot temperatures, and that cool front, huh? You're learning the litany, Debbie. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Things are going to go boom in the night. Uh, maybe very close to us. We'll just have to keep an ear peeled. Ah, this is Minnesota at its finest, the outdoors. Hello, everyone. I'm Ralph John Fritz, inviting you to Minnesota's first ever hunting and conservation show. It's a unique event. It's sponsored by WCCO Television and Radio. And it's the sports show designed especially for hunters. And all the experts will be there. So come on down. The Minnesota Hunting and Conservation Show at Met Center, August 13th through 16th. Sponsored by these organizations songs to sing along with. From the Light FM, FM 103, WLTE. Listen to the Light FM at work all day, at home to take it easy, in the car to unwind, at night and on weekends to relax with family and friends. Here's how we do it. No boring sleepy strings, no elevator music, no blasts of rock, just hour after hour of songs to sing along with. On the Light FM, 103, WLTE. We just had rain gutters installed on our house today, and it looks like I'm going to have a chance to find out if they work. Well, isn't that nice? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you can buy your uh, bumper shoot and get them ready. It may be one of those Camelot-type rains that will only occur during the nighttime hours, and it may not even occur here, but it's one of those nights we've got to keep looking around. As the sun was coming up this morning and burning off the fog, the people down at the Severe Storms Forecast Center said this whole region, including us, was under a slight risk of severe weather, which is much more than we normally have. The slight risk means there's a good chance. I know it's kind of weird the way they term it, but there's a good chance, all right, because a tornado watch was posted until 9 o'clock. does not include the Twin Cities area, but places like St. Cloud and Alexandria and Duluth and Hibbing and Bemidji and what have you are all in it. And in it is a fairly significant cold front which is moving through. This is going to be our change in the weather, getting us out of the steam bath for tomorrow. But as the air masses clash along this cold front, uh, things are starting to happen. And we've been watching and twiddling our thumbs, and sure enough, uh, if you watch the satellite replay, right there, there you can see this thunderstorm starting to develop eastern South Dakota and up into northwestern Minnesota. Uh, this is really unstable air. Last night, Minot had over five inches of rain. This has been the year for flash floods. Chicago just had theirs, and well, here comes the next batch. We'll just see what happens. Uh, getting a sort of a closer up look, we've been watching thunderstorms during the afternoon move east-southeastwards across Leech Lake with a lot of lightning in them, and new thunder showers began to develop extending south uh, westwards from that area, moving into the northwestern part of our state. And looking at radar, now we've got to really go out on long range uh, to see them, so why don't we just go all the way to Fargo here, and heavy thunderstorms, which have been producing up to one-inch hail at places like Vergas and Denton, Minnesota, so they are in the severe storm category. Locally heavy rains is indicated by the red and orange colors on the radar display. Our own local radar peering out, sees nothing, of course, in the immediate area, but here is the cold front. Can you see the cold front? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? And it has been moving steadily in an east, eastward direction. Most of the severe weather is in the north and then central portion of the state. All of these counties, Itasca and Cass and Hubbard and Wadena, what have you, are under severe thunderstorm warnings for typically the next 30 minutes. Most of the weather threat seems to be moving in this direction. 
we might get through this without anything, but after midnight tonight, as that front gets into this area, we still have the possibility of getting it here. So we'll just uh, wait. For the rest of the evening, for the most part, though, looks pretty good locally in the immediate metro area. Didn't make 90 today, in case you care, but it got close. 89 degrees above normal. 71 last night was a relatively unsleepable night. So far, nothing in the bucket. Sun is setting earlier and earlier. Another one of those signs of impending fall. 8.20 p.m. is sunset. Tomorrow, we'll see cooler air moving in, and it's out there. Another sign of impending fall. Large area 30s, places like Winnemucca. We're in the 30s and 31 at North Lake Tahoe. And up in the mountains, got down into the actually sub-freezing area. By tomorrow... The front will go through. It's not going to be a totally clean front. In other words, it's not going to clear out in back of it. And there will be some scattered, isolated showers throughout the region uh, tomorrow. It will be cooler, but notably less muggy. The dew points will go down out of the 70s and into the 50s and 60s, which is comfortable. Heavier rain tomorrow is going to move over into Wisconsin. We still have the possibility of a quarter-inch type shower during the early morning hours and again later on in the afternoon, but nothing significant that will occur tonight if it occurs. High Saturday. Pleasant 70s and low 80s over the five-state region. As we said, the dew points will be down into the very comfortable rain. So all in all, we might just get through this without any major problems and certainly an easing of the discomfort. And it certainly was a good day to go out, fly a kite, to have a picnic, and it'll continue nice for the rest of this evening. It is uh, right now mostly, well, it's high clouds. Basically, the sun is shining for the most part. 87 degrees with the dew points, a sticky 73, works out to 63% of saturation. Get a little relief from the southeast breeze at 16. The pressure continues to fall at 29.67. Then for tonight, partly cloudy, warm and humid. Watch out for thunderstorms after midnight for the most part, particularly in the northern portion of the viewing area. 73 for a low. Then Sunday, sort of a mixed bag. Variably cloudy, scattered showers in the morning and again possibly in the afternoon. Less muggy, high about 84. Southerly winds shifting into the northwest as the cold front comes through. Then Sunday night, partial clearing and cooler, low about 60. Monday, Basically an all right day, but there will be some fair amount of clouds. There's a few scattered thunder showers around in the high 78 degrees. The rest of the week suggests no great changes from that. Temperatures will be around normal. Uh, should be rather pleasant midweek and Thursday, another chance of thunder showers moving in. So if we can get through about the midnight to 6 to 8 a.m. period, I think most of the heavy thunderstorm activity will have cleared the metro with that front. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Some Twin Cityans probably have smiles on their faces, but calluses on their hands this evening because of their effort to raise money for an organization that helps the disabled. They staged the 7th annual Wheelathon at Lake Nokomis. Members of the North Stars joined others in wheeling over a 12-mile course. They're raising money for Accessible Space Incorporated. That's a nonprofit group that provides housing and transportation for the handicapped. Today's money goes to support the two vans that transport the clients of Accessible Space. And it was a great day for the Minnesota Special Olympics. The festival was organized by the Minneapolis Parks and Recreation Department. About 100 special athletes completed, competed today at Lake Hiawatha, the state's Special Olympics and annual event held in the Twin Cities. Well, the outcome of one game tonight uh, means a lot. The Twins game, the Vikings game, outcome not so important, but performances. Yeah, strap on your chin straps, Viking fans, because this is it. And it'll go on till the end of December. We'll talk about tonight's game in a moment here. Here from Mark Rosen. A lot of cleaners look shiny, wet. I shine. But they dry, streaked, and dull. Well, not with new Mr. Clean. Its special formula dries virtually streak-free, so your floor looks shiny, wet, even when it's dry. Uh-oh. It's dry. How'd you do that? How'd we do that? New Mr. Clean leaves your floor looking shiny, wet, even when dry. Okay, now the first thing you do when cleaning fuel injectors is to make sure you have plenty of Conoco unleaded gasoline. Yeah. Right. Conoco's unleaded gasolines with power scrub clean your engine's fuel system. All right, then you spray the left. So your car runs smoother. And then you scrub to the right. With more power. And then you fire! Any questions? Get power scrubbed with Conoco unleaded gasolines. Experience the energy, the excitement, and the enduring popularity. I'm a big-time guy. Next on Channel 4. And ready or not, here it is. Football season. Preseason, anyway. Yeah, we got an old Kansas City Chiefs fan there. How about you, Mike? Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers. Know. Old <laughs> Chicago Bear fan. 
pardon the uh, expression, old, but that's how it is. And we got a guy who better be a Viking fan tonight waiting to talk to us. The Vikings open the preseason tonight in New Orleans with almost as many unanswered questions as there are names in the roster. One thing for sure, though, Mark Rosen is there in the booth. He broadcast the game for WCCO tonight. Mark, of course, quarterbacks always get a lot of attention, right? Always, Tony, and tonight uh, it'll be Wade Wilson uh, starting at quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, certainly a season of high expectations for Minnesota coming off a 9-7 and seven season a year ago. A lot of people figure they may challenge the Chicago Bears for the divisional title. That's a ways away yet. Right now they're more concerned about the development of their players, in particular their younger players. But you mentioned quarterback uh, Wade Wilson. He's getting a lot of snaps these days uh, in Mankato, and so is uh, rook our rookies R Rich Gannon and Brent Pease. All of them will play tonight. Wilson in particular has fond memories of the New Orleans Saints. It was at the last game of the regular season last year at the Metrodome. Wade Wilson was 17 for 33. He threw for 361 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, the Vikings win that game 33 to 17. And Wilson really had an exceptional day. In fact, was named NFC Player of the Week. And uh, as you can take a look at Wade Wilson in action against the Saints, Jerry Burns told us that uh, he expects to play Wade Wilson certainly the first quarter and maybe through the first half, depending on how things are going. He does want to take a look at uh, his rookies, Rich Gannon and Brent Pease. And to be fair to Gannon and Pease, he also wants to see those players with their first stringers. Uh, defensively, the Vikings, for the first time that I can recall, are going to be starting a rookie, uh, either offense or defense, in the first preseason game. Henry Thomas, a third-round draft choice out of LSU, will, in fact, be playing in his backyard here in New Orleans tonight. We be starting at uh, a tackle for the Vikings, and a lot of people have high expectations for him. So we'll have a chance to see DJ Dozier and all the rookies uh, starting in about a half hour. Bob Lurtzman and Joe Central will be joining us, and uh, I think we've set an NFL record. We will have the largest broadcast team in the history of the NFL, all of us going at least six foot five, two and a quarter. We'll all try to fit into this booth a little bit later. <laughs> Lurtzman and Central have lost weight, huh, Mark? Okay, That's good right. luck to you. <laughs> so you might be asking, why weren't the Twins all smiling after beating Seattle last night, six to three? a win that snapped their two-game losing streak and gave them a three-and-a-half game lead over the uh, rest of the teams in the West. Well, they were worried about outfielder Kirby Puckett, who had been hit on the hand, the left hand, by a fastball in the eighth inning. After the game, the Twins didn't know just how serious Kirby's injury was. Now we know x-rays show no broken bones, but Kirby's hand hurts and it is swollen. Can he play tonight? Well, as we mentioned earlier, we've talked to the folks out there, and manager Tom Kelly says, He's going to let him take batting practice, then uh, decide. Also, Kelly's going to go with rookie pitcher Roy Smith. Smith's first start in the major leagues. First start of the season, of course, against Lee Gooderman, the unheralded Mariner with an impressive record of 9-3. and three. Well, Boston pitcher Roger Clemens got lucky today at Fenway Watch. A Pete O'Brien rocket ricocheted off his ankle. Clemens didn't get hurt. He got a double play. Spike Owen, Johnny on the spot, caught the ball, stepped on second for the D.P. The Sox needed all the help they could get. They edged the Rangers there by the score of 7-6. to six. One other game in the Major League, in the American League this afternoon. In that other game, the White Sox shut out Toronto one to nothing. Well, in the season of Scuff Gate and Iran Gate, I guess it's appropriate that the Mets might have a Richard Nixon doll in their dugout. Tricky Dick didn't help them on the field, though, however. The Mets uh, were blown away today by Bull Durham and the Cubbies, 7-3. The Mets now six games out of the East. They've lost three straight. In the National League, here's how it went today. There were just two games. There's that New York Mets and Cubs score, 7-3 Cubs. In San Francisco, blanked L.A., 5-0. Well, the first annual Minnesota Hunting and Conservation Show is now three days old. Our outdoor specialist, Ralph John Fritz, is indoors at the Sports Center. And Ralph, I guess the attendance out there, among other things, has been very good, very successful show so far. It has, uh, Tony. Uh, I know thousands have gone through here. We have a little lull at the moment because of, uh, you know, a lot of the afternoon crowd has gone home and there will be a big crowd again here this evening. But uh, promoters Greg Geisler and John Caruso tell us they are very satisfied with this, the first annual uh, such affair, the Hunting and Conservation Show. We have Gene Woodman with us here, and uh, Gene is currently giving a seminar to some folks here live. Uh, on uh, deer hunting. This is deer hunting day at the uh, the hunting uh, show, and you're talking about family hunting and deer hunting, Jean. I'm talking about how to get the family involved along with you deer hunting. And just how do you go about doing that? Well, you need to do it by, first of all, picking the perfect day so that it's not too cold and not too wet and that they will enjoy getting out there. You need to train them right. You need to educate them with a lot of patience. You think there are not as many women? Or, there aren't as many, but uh, you think there should be more women that are deer hunters? I think there should be, and I hope that in future years there will be, because a lot of women are he heading up our households today, and it's important that they give the youth an opportunity to hunt. You mentioned youth. How young should you start them? 
Well, they can't take youth firearm safety till they're 12, and they need that to become a big game hunter, but they can start bird hunting at as young an age as they can walk through the, the uh, meadow. Okay. And uh, you do quite a bit of your hunting where? Up around Grand Rapids, where you are now? Yes, I just moved up to Grand Rapids, so I'm not sure I'm looking forward to getting back to the tight woods because I'm a bow hunter, but I've done a lot down the Minnesota River Valley in this area for a number of years. Gene Woodman, good to talk to you. We'll let you get back to your seminar. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Well, that's it. The uh, hunting show continues, by the way, uh, through Sunday, Tony, and tomorrow is Waterfowl Day here at the Hunting and Conservation Show. Back to you. And then Ralph will have to go back to work. What he's doing now, he loves. Right, Ralph? <laughs> you got it. You know, a lot of outdoor people and adventurers are at the show, but they have nothing on Stéphane Pénon. The 25-year-old Frenchman took his custom-made sailboat 3,300 miles across the Atlantic. Now, Pénon completed his uh, perilous journey from New York to France in less than 50 hours. That'd be a nice sail to take, wouldn't it? Yeah, you got to have some sore shoulders after that, I think. <laughs> you got a lot of muscles to yeah. do that. Mm. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you, John. We're going to close tonight with a look at a uh, late summer Minnesota tradition. The Minnesota Re Renaissance Festival got underway near Shakopee. Each year, the festival recreates a 16th century harvest celebration and includes plenty of food, arts and crafts, music, comedy and games. The Renaissance Festival continues every weekend through September 27th, and we leave you with, that a, little, uh, with a little bit of that tonight. Half the challenge is done. <laughs> and we still have a champion. Do we have another challenge? Yes. Good night, hon. Why is it that after a couple of years, Good night, hon. your mattress sags and sags? Good night, hon. Because it's not a beauty rest. Our unique barrel-shaped coils of high-carbon steel are pre-compressed to eliminate sag, to give you a firm, comfortable mattress that can't sag, so that your beauty rest night, hon. will stay as firm as the day night, you bought it. Beauty Rest by Simmons. Forever firm. No payments on Simmons bedding till February during Dayton's semi-annual home sale ending September 14th. Songs to sing along with. From the Light FM, FM 103, WLTE. Listen to the Light FM at work all day. At home to take it easy. In the car to unwind. At night and on weekends to relax with the family and friends. Here's how we do it. No boring sleepy strings. No elevator music. No blasts of rock. Just hour after hour of songs to sing along with. On the Light FM, 103, WLTE. Fond memories, familiar images, and a timeless institution. This is marriage then, this is marriage now. Between the best of friends, the best of lovers, in the best of times. What's the secret to living, to loving, to laughing together? What makes them care to dare, to take the plunge, the good with the bad? and to accept life together. What makes a marriage? Is it love or laughter? Weekdays on Channel 4. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul.